Welcome back to a straight talk and I invite you as always to write comments uh, during the live stream. We will try to look at those comments and answer them on the spot. That's kind of the point of this whole engagement is for you all who are viewing at home or work to write a comment or ask a question and we'll just we'll just take those on the fly and address them. So if you write in the comment, it'll make it a lot more engaging, a lot more fun to get to know what you're interested in hearing more about. You can also like the page and it would be really helpful if you share the page of Greenville University's page with others so that then they can join uh, Straight Talk as well. Uh, I appreciate that uh, Mr. Breck Nelson actually filled in for me last week. I apologize. I had a pretty bad case of the uh, flu, so it was very helpful that he was able to tell us a little bit more about the Capitol building projects that we have going on throughout the summer. And he'll actually be doing short videos of those, and so you can see the progression of that as well. I'm actually in Boston um, today attending uh, Michael Hammond's installation as the ninth president of Gordon College. He's one of the presidents in the CCC and was exciting to uh, just see him um, and, and all that they're doing at Gordon College, another great ministry here out east. And so I'm here in uh, my hotel room and not on campus. However, I have heard that it's a great day. Uh, According to Coach Roy, uh, he says, Coach Mo, he says it's the best day that we have on Greenville University's campus, and I tend to agree. It's the day that we host our Special Olympics, and uh, George Barber and our education folks are, are crucial in putting that on, and all the students hosting, I think, over 100 Special Olympians today on campus, so that's really exciting, and and obviously part of who we are as an institution. So shout out to that group. And I look forward to uh, seeing some, uh, uh, some flashbacks about that event. So anyway, again, remember you can like, you can comment, you can share, but please write your questions in the, the chat function of the live stream. And I'll try to get to those. So today what we're talking about is a little bit different. We're talking about um, how Greenville University uh, is beating the odds, <laughs> if, and if you will, and meeting the challenges of higher education generally, and specifically Christian liberal arts higher education in the Midwest. And so uh, I'm going to be talking about just what those challenges are. And it, it's not like I can... Uh, probably address everything that you might want to know about it in this time, but I will try to do my best to tell you how we're doing quite well in the middle of very challenging times. So let me just kind of name a few of those challenges. I'm sure that you're aware, but just to state the obvious, um, we have society kind of questioning the value of higher education generally and how it meets or doesn't meet employment needs in in all sorts of industries. We have enrollment declines and projected birth dearth, which is in by 2026, a decline in total uh, population density for the age group that attends college during that time. Um, we have rising discount rates across much of private higher ed and even in um, state schools with uh, a lot of unfunded aid. And so maybe you've heard some of these stories. Obviously we have uh, through the pandemic experienced all sorts of gaps in education, especially um, even mental and emotional health of students being affected by the pandemic and just a sense of loneliness and, and uh, despair kind of that is uh, causing students, high school students to uh, question, you know, what they want to do next. Um, obviously, with liberal arts, we 
you know, talk about what's the relevance in meeting the industry needs. We'll talk about how it's very relevant, but sometimes it's not as obvious as a trade degree or a professional, uh, specific professional degree and how we're meeting those challenges as well. Um, not to mention that uh, Christian Orthodox views being uh, questioned, lack of unity within the church, and really even perceived value of the church in Christian higher ed by Christian parents, and so how that's impacting things. And then top it off, just kind of a society that is having trouble being unified, just kind of a divisive uh, social political climate that we're in, and uh, just, you know, how do we continue to lead with humility and grace and yet courageous discussion about God's enduring truths? Um, it's really difficult because we're talking about things that cause people, you know, the global instability, the pandemic, all the trends that we were seeing in the United States before that. And how, how are we uniquely going to be salt and light in this troubled world? And, and these are big questions that we're dealing with. And I would say that we're really on the front lines of those discussions as Greenville University, as alums, we wanna hear from, from you. And we wanna hear, you know, what are you thinking about in terms of all of these questions and, and how can we together um, really do something impactful as, like I said, we're really on the tip of the spear, the front lines of a lot of these discussions. But I wanna offer you uh, just a little bit of encouragement because I believe that you'd be very proud of Greenville University if you were here and knew what was going on on campus, you'd see a lot of outside the box thinking on behalf of the students. We really are taking a mentality of no student le left behind in our operations and even the things that they're dealing with, with loss, with grief, with disruption. There has been just amazing engagement of our students in chapel and clubs and curricular and co-curricular. We have 90% return rate for four straight semesters during the pandemic. And so we're just seeing increased engagement and increased awareness by our faculty and staff that just no student is, is left unseen. We want to make sure because we know that the God of the universe sees those students. We want to be there for them in that way and be the hands and feet of Christ. And so it, it sounds, I mean, uh, maybe um, like obviously that should be the case, but when you're in the middle of all these challenges, you really have to think outside the box. You really have to rethink your operations and just figure out a way to just come around those students and, and be um, the change that you want to see through this, this challenging time. We really are even thinking through, um, you know, what is the persona or uh, the value proposition for st certain students and which types of students really bring something or add so much value to our campus. And of course, all students are welcome, but we really have been thinking about where to put our scholarship dollars because there aren't enough to go around. And so we want to make sure that we are encouraging those students who would uniquely fit at Greenville to be here. And so things like character and service that we've held dear in our institution for years and years, we're finding out ways that we just keep getting better at finding uh, ways that we could get students who have that depth. Um, maybe they're overcoming adversity already as, as high school students or as young adults, or even if they have been out in the workforce and wanna come back and, and study. We're, we're doing that through groups like Core Community. We're working with St. Jude's and obviously um, a lot of adversity, medical adversity that those students, that those kids are overcoming. Working with the Salvation Army, uh, Catholic and other uh, uh, just Christian high schools and and organizations that that we see fellowship of Christian athletes. So we're talking to these organizations and and finding some of these students that they would even vouch for have just superior um, depth to them. And I say depth intentionally because I don't want there to be a box around what character is. What we're really seeking is that inner. Uh, 
just desire to see more and to serve and to overcome when when that uh, when the circumstances demand it. And we believe that that's going to be very important in closing this uh, gap that you see this dissonance between how is the liberal arts uh, really propelling students into the workforce and what employers need in this gap that employers think is happening between what they need and what the colleges are providing their graduates. When I went on a I kind of rode the circuit with some leaders and I just asked them, you know, could I just listen in your circles about what you wish that Christian higher education was doing? What do you hope from a liberal arts education from a school like ours in Greenville? And without telling them our mission statement, anything, they consistently said, whether it was in business, education, uh, engineering, social work, I mean, all across the board. And they just kept saying character and competence. So clearly, these are things that matter. We know that we have world-class faculty and academics that we can prepare, but what we really also need in that skills gap, as they were saying, is the competence isn't just the, the knowledge, because a lot of knowledge can be obtained from your cell phone, but it's also the... Uh, team building skills, the respect of others, the, the um, ability to um, work together to get a project done and show up on time and be trustworthy, be that employee that goes the extra mile, all these things that are a little bit more intangible, but students have to have a safe place to explore these things, to learn that respect of others and gain confidence in their own strengths. And so we're, we're focusing on some of those intangibles as well as we lean into this character and competence that meets, uh, meets employers where they want and then meets students where they are. Um, we really do believe in this experiential learning model because of that. So last week I sat at what is Common Day of Learning and it's a showcase of all the projects that have been done throughout the semester by juniors and seniors. And there were so many great ones that we could talk about. There was a whole host of them that were solving problems in education. As you know, it's a historic area of strength. Um, and so lots of students thinking about just issues in education. Uh, there were ones with our community, with Grow Greenville, um, a local um, uh, dog park uh, initiative, a, uh, all sorts of um, different ones throughout the community. So I could talk about so many, but one of them that I went to just, again, amazes me. We had an international student and, an, and a group of other students who put together a design for a new piece of furniture. And we've done this before with a company called Kaufman Brands. And essentially what they're willing to do is pay it forward. So if our students design a product and launch it, they'll make it. And if it sells, they'll tithe back 10% of all of the earnings, all of the profit from that to pay it forward for these scholarships for character and service. And so this particular product, um, that was an adaptable vanity uh, type piece for high-end um, apartment flats, uh, the, the company really, really liked and um, actually ended up talking to the international student who had the idea afterwards about designing for them in the future. And so we're connecting the dots between all of this creativity and the ability to persevere through a project that's very hard and work with people who you're not used to seeing on campus because this was a student who hadn't worked with uh, another student in marketing, uh, another student who um, was in social work and just putting all those pieces together from different majors really is the difference. That is the experience that our students need to connect the dots between what we do and what um, society is actually asking of them when they graduate. But even more than that, what I see out of Greenville University that's just so important to answering these questions is the roots of our historic mission is just an awesome platform for making 
dreams literally a reality for so many students. And, and we're adding such value to not just Greenville, as Breck talked to you about last week, um, but even in places like Nashville and Dallas and some of these new initiatives where we're, we're playing off of our strengths, the strengths that we've had in the music industry and in healthcare and social work and um, our uh, business degrees, as well as others that we will continue to expand upon. But we're, we're starting to add value in our Jerusalem, as well as Judea, Samaria, to the very ends of the earth. And that is just uncontested. I mean, it just, it's, it's new waters, it's blue oceans, because I think the way that we're looking at education just opens up. It's not to compete with the things that other schools do really well. So you have state schools, R1 institutions, and they do create new knowledge, new research. Uh, and that's very important, but oftentimes what's left behind are students in the classrooms who are being taught by teaching assistants or in very large lecture halls, stage on a stage model, not coming alongside with this very uh, hands-on experiential learning. Nothing wrong with what the state schools are doing. It's just not what we do. Uh, junior colleges, yes, they are skilling, they're, they're upskilling a whole region, wherever they're located, they are connecting to what are the jobs in the area and how can we as, as quickly as possible get students into those jobs. And that's very important because a lot of times that is a pathway that a student needs to take, but we're doing more than that. We are giving them this holistic education, the, the beauty of the liberal arts, but not just for the upper class that, you know, maybe liberal arts used to be used for, but we're doing that for all who come and want to be driven by character, competence, they want to serve in their unique capacities, and they want to see how they serve in relationship to others in other majors and actually work together to see those other skill sets in action. And that matters, that's very different than what the experience would be at a junior college or a state school for our students. And so we're really taking that seriously, but we also, obviously, because we are so deeply rooted and connected and our theology is, is so sound, actually, and inspiring for times like these, it, it's, it, it transcends cultures. And actually, the Free Methodist Church is growing uh, more rapidly outside the United States. Um, it's just, it's a pathway, if you will, through the storm. So we're doing this liberal arts education that is very tangible to see, but we're doing it within a faith tradition that is enriching to our students from a spiritual aspect with, as you remember, as I was saying, a lot of students through the pandemic went through a lot of kind of hope and hopelessness and despair and loneliness. And so we're doing this in the context of a Christian environment where our faculty and our staff are pouring into our students and we're engaging them in spiritual development opportunities all along the way. And that is something special of God. I, I believe that we are, like I said, at the, at the precipice, at the brink of something just amazing that God wants to do at Greenville University. We are starting to be relevant in our town. Um, the, the, first street building that is gonna be real close to the energy on the town square at, at college and second street is this physical representation of the college leaving the building in essence or leaving the campus so that we engage meaningfully. That's a very unique component of our campus. I mean, I went to Gordon, I've gone to so many other colleges across the CCCU and other independent schools and I haven't seen very many any that I can think of that are actually located, I mean, almost overlapping their, a small town. Oftentimes they're outside of a major city, maybe by an hour, um, or they're in a small town, but they're kind of sectioned off. They're not in the middle of the town. So this is very rare. And I think it's an opportunity that God is just giving us to have this live, learn, work, play kind of environment where it's all melded together for our students, both 
mentally and physically. And so it's almost tangible what we're doing with this experiential learning and being salt and light in our Jerusalem. Um, we really can't be afraid to try new things. I mean, all of the all of the things I mentioned at the beginning are real. These are real challenges and we have to go courageously, not recklessly, but courageously as the Lord leads and continue to press in and through our mission. We don't wanna become something that we're not, um, but we do want to have that mission of empowering students for Christ-like character and service, just mold and shape into the current times to address the current challenges. And that's really the essence of the innovation that we've been talking about over the past few weeks. And we wanna focus on areas of strength, like I said, and we've been historically strong in so many of our majors, but we are seeing the healthcare professions and um, just a lot that is going on. And obviously the sciences and education and business and social work and criminal justice. And so many of these majors that we already have are very relevant and we're able to expound upon those and really engage in new ways through those majors. We also uh, want to make sure that um, we bridge that gap between a degree and then life after college so that the students, just like the, the student group that I told you built this piece of furniture that was showcased the other day, uh, we want them to have that experience encapsulated in their resume so that they go out knowing exactly what they're able to do in, in a team setting to get a project done and see it all the way through. We want them to have a connection base, just like this uh, CEO of the company told this uh, young man that he could design for him anytime. We want those connections to be real. And these are other Christian leaders. So we're actually exponentially increasing the influence on our students' lives by volunteers, CEOs of companies, organizational leaders of all kinds, um, actually pouring into our students through these projects so they already have a built-in connection base. And we would love for some of you, our alums, to get involved in some of those projects because we believe in you and what you're doing as well and would love to see our students engage you. Again, it just exponentially impacts the uh, depth of the experience and the connection base that they'll have for a lifetime. And I think that's that's just very important in our world today. I don't know of many colleges that are offering that kind of connection to those who have gone before. So like I said, today I'm in a hotel room in uh, Boston uh, celebrating with Michael Hammond from Gordon, Gordon College. And so I'm hoping that um, you all will continue to engage this Facebook Live. We've got one more week next week that will be live. And I'm really relying on questions that you all have and have our final uh, episode, which we'll be back and we'll do future episodes on Fridays, but we're going to take a little break for commencement uh, and some other festivities the week after that. So next week is kind of your last chance to get in questions that that we can answer live on these on these chat sessions on these on these straight talks. So I, I don't see any questions today. But again, all you have to do is write in the comments and you can push a question and I will answer it live or if you want to just write it in response to the post after the fact. If you're watching this video later, you can just respond in the, in the post and ask a question after the fact, and we'll try to get to it next week. But this is kind of the last chance to uh, ask the questions for this first episode uh, or these first few episodes that we're doing, but we'll come back uh, later on in the summer. So you'll be able to, um, you'll be able to do it then as well. But um, anyway, I think that's all that we have for today. And so I appreciate you turn, tuning in again. I invite you to share the link with others so they can tune in, especially if you have a lot of alums in your network on Facebook, it'd be very helpful if you would share the page that way they can ask questions as well and tell them to join next week in our final episode of straight talk, at least for now. So see you later. Thanks so much. Go change the world.